Uh, let's talk about some of the biggest stories of the year that are set to spill over into 2010. Bloomberg Business Week editor Josh uh, Tarangal has been following those stories, and he's here with me now. And Josh, uh, your cover for this week uh, is all about financial regulatory reform, right. and we know that you know there was a lot of momentum when this crisis started. Uh, that momentum is fading, right? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, an interesting thing sort of happened. Washington. You know, if we, we our story, our cover story sort of winds the the moment back to right after the financial crisis broke, and people mm -hmm. were livid and furious. And Barney Frank, um, who's the head of Financial Services Committee, was really preparing to do some major change to the industry. And what our story does is kind of explain how the bill that came out of the House turned into what it is, which is not major reform. Now, that's not to say that we didn't save lots of the infrastructure of, of the financial services industry. We did. Right. But saving it isn't the same as reforming it. And, and really, what's, what's most interesting is that, um, you know, in the House, there's, there's the New Democrat Coalition, 68 moderate Democrats who are sort of the heirs to the Democratic Leadership Council that Bill Clinton and Al Fromm created. And they really impacted the bill in a way I don't think anyone could have anticipated. These are folks who represent either they came out of the financial services industry or they represent constituencies that serve that industry. And they really changed that bill. Well, then, and they changed that bill. And in that sense, the opportunity has been squandered, no? Well, it's possible, yeah. I mean, look, they, we, we now move to the Senate, um, which is not a great place to create uh, wildly reform-based legislation. Um, at the same time, if bonuses come out, if the if the street gets angry again, yeah, you could see people go back in and revisit that bill. Um, but what you know, what we show is really just what happens to that legislation, how it gets trimmed back, and what its impact is going to be. Okay, I want to move on to another a great piece that you also have in your um, in your magazine about China and the mm -hmm. property market. We've been talking actually quite a bit about uh, you know potential property bubble in China, and in fact, uh, it really is happening, right? I mean, there are people in China who are just flipping properties and they're going after absolutely. The number that sticks out from the story is that in November, nationwide in China, housing starts were up 194 percent. 194 percent. That is a huge number. And what you're seeing is that um, families that are used to being incredibly fiscally conservative are flipping. Um, they're buying multiple apartments. And the bubble is really inflating at the high end. So the, the problem is that it's not lower income or middle income folks getting in and, mm. and you know, being raised up by their hopes. It's, it's people really, you know, trying to game the market. And there are entire cities being built out there in the th desert. There was one called Ordo. Yeah, is Ordos, right? which is in actually near Mongolia. The, it is near the Mongolian border. It's an ancient city. And they decided to build a new city out of the old city. And so they built a, you know, a city hall, a government center, a civic center. And then all around it are thousands and thousands of condos that are currently sitting empty. And... You know, whether you know the housing market or not, there are certain things that most people understand about a bubble. When you see entire cities being built... What, what did they think? They just thought if they built it, people will come? Or, or? Well, yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's a large country. It's been on a tremendous tear. And the, there is no psychology to a bubble. I mean, we talk about it, but people think that they're going to win. And maybe, oh, the, the bubble will burst somewhere else, but not on me. Okay, Josh, good to have you with us. And Happy New Year, by the way. Thanks, you too. Josh of Bloomberg Business Week.